So in, in this lesson, we're going to look at factoring polynomials. This is going to be question four in my lab. So uh, the question says, factor the given polynomial, factor negative one, factor out negative one if the leading coefficient is negative. So if we look at our, our polynomial, it's actually a two variable polynomial. But this is going to be our, our first term, and this is our second term, and this is our third term. Since the leading term has a positive coefficient, we don't have to worry about this negative one. Now, to factor a polynomial, remember, factoring is kind of a, a division concept. So what we're doing is we're looking at each term of the polynomial. So the first term is 6x squared y. Notice how all that is connected by multiplication. Things connected by multiplication are called factors. So then we have this 30x or negative 30x y squared. Notice how all that's connected by multiplication. So those are all called factors. And then you have this 18xy. What we're trying to do is trigger out, figure out what kind of factors they have in common. Now, one way to do this is that when it comes to the numbers themselves, the variables kind of are not as bad, but the numbers are where it gets a little difficult. Notice that a six actually can be broken down into what we call prime numbers. Prime numbers have exactly two factors, one in itself. The prime numbers that may be useful to us are the two, the three, the five, the seven, the 11, and one, or the 13, sometimes 13. Notice that each one of these factors, each one of these numbers here has exactly two factors. The only two numbers you can multiply to get a two is one times two. So notice that four is not a prime number because one times four is not the only way to multiply to get a four. Two times two, also gives you four. So four is not a prime number because it actually has three different factors. Notice that three is prime because one times three is prime. Notice that what's also missing is a six because, you know, six is comprised of not only one times six, but uh, two times three also gives you six. Now, uh, to do a prime factorization, a prime factorization is gonna be a, a product of prime numbers. So if I look at, up here, what we want to do is to find what's called a greatest common factor. We're looking for the, the most that's in common with each one of these terms. So what we got to do is, is one way to do it is if I look at the, the six and make a little t-chart as an organizer, I want to kind of break the six down into its uh, prime factorization. Notice that two does go into six. So two is a factor of six. And since six divided by two is three, that's the other factor. And notice that three is a prime number. So the only thing that's going to go into three is its other factor, which is one. So three goes into three one time. So when I get that little one there, that means I'm kind of finished. This left side represents the factorization or the prime factorization of, of the six. The next number I want to turn my attention to is the 30. The prime numbers of 30, again, two is uh, going to go in 30 since 30 is even. So if I divide 30 by two, I can find its other factor. So 30 divided by two would be 15. So two times 15 would be 30. So these are the two factors of a 30, but notice that 15 is not a prime factor. So I can actually break it down, but I cannot break it down with the two because two does not go into 15 evenly. So if I divide 15 by two, notice how I get a decimal. So here to be factors, they have to be what we call integers or whole numbers. So since two does not go into 15, we move to our next prime number, which is three. And three does go into 15. Three does go into 15 five times. Notice that five is a prime number. So the only thing that's going to go into five is itself. Five is going to go into five one time. So what I end up with is this left side becomes what we call the prime factorization of 30. Two times three times five. Those are the prime factors that represent 30. So notice how that still represents 30. If I look at this 18, notice that two does go in 18 nine times, and three goes into nine three times, and three goes into three one time. So what I can do is I could change 18 to a product of prime numbers. So what I can do is I can change six x squared y to two times three times x squared, which is x times x, times 
times y. So I can look at it as its factors. The 30xy squared, notice I could change the 30 to a 2 times a 3 times a 5 times an x times a y times a y. And then I have plus then this 18xy. Notice that the 18xy, the 18 is made up of a 2 times a 3 times a 3, and then you have an x and a y. So what I want to know is what's actually in common. So what I can do is circle what each term, each uh, each uh, term has in common. So if I look across there, the first one has a two, the second one has a two, the third one has a two. So they do have a two in common. So I'm gonna kind of circle it. So what's, what I'm doing is I'm actually gonna divide that out. Let's look at the three, they do have a three here. This has a three here. This has a three here. So they do have a three in common. So that's a common factor. If you look at the x's, these, this has two x's, but the other two only have one x. So the only thing they have in common is just one x. So the x is also a common factor. So if I look at the y, that's the other different factor. And notice that this has a y, this has two y's, and this has one y. So let's say that how they only have one y in common. So if I put that all together, two times three is six. There's an x and there's a y. 6xy is what's described as the greatest common factor. So what I want to do is write what's left out of this other term. So since I factored the 2, the 3, the x, and the y out, notice I'm going to, when I factor it out, I'm, it's going to become a factor itself. And I'm going to use parentheses to write the remaining factor. So there's going to be an x left. There's a minus sign. There's a 5 and a y left. And there's a plus sign. And then there's only a three left on the last term. So the x minus 5y plus 3 becomes the remaining factor. So the first common factor is going to be the monomial. And then we have this trinomial is going to be the remaining factor. So factoring creates what we call a multiplication statement. So the 6xy is going to be one factor. And it's going to be multiplied by this x minus 5y plus 3. That's the remaining factor. So another way to do this, if you look, the biggest factor of 6 is 6. So what I could also ask myself is, is 6 a factor of the other terms? And what you should recognize is, so if I look at this expression, 6x squared y minus this 30xy squared plus this 18xy, another way to look at it is, you know, if you look at the numbers, what's the greatest common factor of each number? In other words, what's the biggest number that divides into all three of those numbers? And you should be able to pick up on a 6. If you look at the x's, how many x's do they have in common? Well, this has 2, this has 1, this has 1. So the most in common is just simply 1x in common. If you look at the y's, they all do have a y in common, so I bring out the y. So I can also look at it from that perspective. So if I divide a 6 out of the 6, that divides out. If I divide an x squared by an x, that leaves me an x. If I divide the y by the y, that means they cancel out. So the only thing that left out of this first uh, term is just the x. If I divide the 6 into the 30, that's going to leave me this again, minus this, this 5. The x divides out. If I divide the y squared by the y, that's going to just leave me 1y. And then if I divide the 6 into the 18, that's going to leave me a 3. And notice that the x and the y will divide out to give me then just a plus 3. You also can actually show it like this, 6x squared y. You're dividing it by 6xy minus this 30xy squared. You're dividing it by 6xy. And you have this 18xy, and you're dividing it by 6xy. So that the 6s are dividing out. The x squareds are dividing out, but that's leaving you 1. The y's are dividing out. This, the 6 goes into 35 times, the x divides out. There's two y's on top, one y on the bottom, so only one y divides out. The 6 goes into 18 three times. Notice how the x and the y all divide out. So that 6xy comes out, and you can kind of see what's left is this x, there's this 5 left, and there's this y left, and then there's this 3 left over here. You can kind of see there's that x minus the 5y plus the 3. So it kind of walks you through how we can factor. So again, 
factory means to rewrite the problem as a multiplication statement. And that's what we've done. We, we're reintroducing parentheses, if you will, back into the problem. 